I overlaid this fractal and I said, well, wait a minute, we're kind of just like exactly where we were at in 2016. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And today we are taking a peek at the market in general for cryptocurrency. And right here in front of me, I have the Bitcoin chart. And what I've done is I've, I've overlaid this previous fractal that we had right here and just you know copied it and, and placed it up here. And I found something that was quite interesting to me. You know, right now there's so much fear in the market. And I, I overlaid this fractal and I said, well, wait a minute, we're kind of just like exactly where we were at in 2016 after this after this whole thing happened and we crashed, we came over here and then we were right here. Well, that, that's like right where we are right now. Now there was something very different about this, you know, 2019 run up that we had that even I thought just it didn't feel right. Um, if you go back in my last videos, I, I showed exactly why it was it was very obvious why this should have been the actual bottom. And it, it all came back to looking at these measured moves right here. It, it completely mirrored these percentage moves identically on the Bitcoin market cap chart. So I was like, okay, cool. We came down, we did the exact same distance um, fall. This is about an 83.5% fall in our total Bitcoin market cap. And it did the same thing here, 83.5% off the Bitcoin market cap. The difference is in, this, in the past, it did this long consolidation here on the bottom and we can overlay it right here and you can see we did not consolidate nearly as long on the bottom um, we we popped up you know hundreds of days earlier than we should have i think um and why say i think when i can just measure it and tell you so we should have waited about another 162 days before we actually broke out we should have consolidated for 162 days beyond the April 1st, April 2nd explosion that we had. So where do we deviate in this whole fractal? And that's going to be this this whole bull run that we had. But as you can see, we have now come back into the exact range of where we would where we should be. Like if we don't actually use just a real trend line, but we kind of say, okay, this is kind of the the direction that Bitcoin moves in right here. Well, we came below it, exploded above, came below. And the thing is, we just got too, we got too far away from the average of where we should be, which is why we had the big, the big pullback. We got way too far away from our average growth. So here we are, and we're looking at where we're at the exact same point in time, right? So... Three hundred and sixty seven days after the bottom of the bear market was found in 2015. Is when we were right here. Here we are three hundred and sixty to sixty seven days beyond that capitulation move and we're back in the same the same spot. The only reason people have so much fear right now is because we didn't we didn't do it like this right. To get here right the the sentiment and the perception of people would be much different if we had just gradually gone up instead we exploded above it and came back to it so i, I just thought this was really interesting to take a peek at it like this and say hey is are things really as bad as people say that they are or is it more so just that the chart has provided a different perception of the price because the price is exactly where it should be based on time, based on the capitulation crash and time, we should be right here. So I thought this was really interesting and I just wanted to share that with you guys. If we head over to the total market cap, so when we take all of the altcoins and we take Bitcoin and we combine them all together for our total market cap, what does it look like? 
line up the capitulations. And it's relatively in the same spot. You know, you can kind of play with it and you say, okay, well, the capitulation is really here, but then it, it didn't come down far enough. So I've kind of taken an average and just put it like right there. I mean, it's relatively there. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit below, but I mean, just barely. It, it's still in this range. The only thing is it just didn't, it didn't do this exact consolidation pattern to get here, right? It went way above and then now it's here and you know sentiment can change so fast right i mean all this thing really has to do is that and literally the sentiment of the entire community would change everybody why would it change simple it'd be it, it would then become a bull flag so you know, I know there's so much gloom and doom going on right now, but really, if you look at it, the things can change on a dime. And if we compare this to what the past was, is it really all that bad? It looks like it's like exactly where it should be. So let's look over at at Ripple or XRP, right? So Ripple's still just hanging out right in this thing. This is the level where the bull run took off from. We have not broken below that. Nothing's terrible. If anything, it's an amazing buy opportunity right now. And if you're willing to buy up here at 30 cents, why wouldn't you be willing to buy way down here? I saw somebody else post this on Twitter and I was like, dude, I know that's exactly how I think, right? I can log in and pay 23 cents per XRP on Coinbase. Um, kind of a no brainer. But, you know, then there's that fear that's that, that overwhelming feeling of, was I wrong? Am I doing the wrong thing? Uh, and you just kind of start questioning yourselves, right? When you were buying here, you were just completely certain that, oh, this time is definitely it. We're definitely going to the moon. But then it comes down here and you say, oh, wait a minute. No, I'm definitely wrong. It's definitely going all the way down to five cents um, or 15 cents or whatever anybody wants to post. But that's why um, one of my previous videos I had posted that I really like to buy on um, Coinbase Pro because I don't like to just say this is definitely the spot I've definitely got it all figured out and I'm putting all my money down right now I like to accumulate slowly so like every day I'll buy like 25 to 50 dollars worth you know that might be completely different from a lot of you a lot of you might have different amounts you might have more money you might have less money but that's kind of the strategy that I go with and I deposit US dollars into my Coinbase account, and then I go on over to pro.coinbase.com and I can bring my US dollars in there. And then I'll buy on Coinbase Pro because on Coinbase, they charge like $1.99 to $2.99 just to do a little $25 buy or a $50 buy. But over on Coinbase, it'll cost me like 15 cents or something silly. I don't know. It's. Uh, it's wild how, how big of a difference it is in cost. So I always buy it there, but I accumulate practically every day. And it's really hard for me not to try to do a few of those buys each day with this price. Cause it's like, oh my gosh, look, look how oversold it is on the daily. I mean, it is oversold as can go. I mean, maybe it can go lower, but let's, I mean, here. It has not been this oversold since way back here, August of 2018. The last time was before, ev look, the last time it was this more oversold was right before the last bull run. It was when it was below this line. So it went below it, bull run. And then the only other time it was below that was here. And then it went up to there. So I would say it's like uh, kind of a no brainer that I just keep accumulating right here, right? So, okay. I think that's interesting. Go back on over here, show you again. Here is the Bitcoin chart. And look where the price is. Right there, line up time. Line up when we capitulated 
and when we capitulated in 2015, and where the price is. Things are not as gloomy as doomy and doomy as you think they are. And it looks like uh, Black Friday has come a week early. <laughs> so I'm shopping, y'all. Um, that's going to wrap it up for this.